Hello everybody, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me and for joining the Craft Stash Homemade Christmas Blog Hop. So today I'm going to be making a Christmas lantern using my snowflake layering panel. This is the quickest and easiest Christmas decor I've ever created and it has only taken me four sheets of A4 paper stroke cardstock. So two sheets of cardstock, two sheets of vellum, that is it. Uh, and a bit of ribbon if you want to. So follow along with this tutorial. I hope you get a chance to make some at home. All the items that myself and all the other crafters within the blog hop are using um, are all discounted or on offer over at Craft Stash. You'll find the details for that all linked down below. If you want to know where to start the blog hop, if you've just stumbled across me, you can go back to the Craft Stash channel, again, linked down below. And also below that, you'll find the order of all the videos because the next person you're going to be hopping on to is the lovely Helen Griffin everything's there for you links channels offers and details of the craft stash vip membership um, that is really important if you're joining the membership you're going to save yourself 10 percent off everything at craft stash so my project today as i said is a lantern check this out this is absolutely beautiful i'm really thrilled with it and i can't believe how quickly it came together it looks stunning over any sort of battery operated candle. It's going to look beautiful as a table centerpiece or just sitting in your entranceway around the festive period. Now, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment on each and every one of the videos in the blog hop. The videos are released every two hours through today. And of course, you can go back and catch up with any of them at any time. You should have just come along from the Craft Stash channel, but if you haven't, you can easily pop back there and take a look at that video. So the great thing about this project is it only takes two sheets of A4 white cardstock and two sheets of vellum or parchment. That is it. Um, obviously, you've got some adhesive in there as well, but it's really, really that quick and simple. So uh, cut your A4 sheets into two each, into half each. So you've got basically four A5 panels of white cardstock, four A5 panels of vellum or parchment. Pop, pop the parchment aside just for now. I'm going to bring in a scoreboard. Now you're going to want to keep all of your A5 pieces long ways, portrait mode, and we're going to do some scoring. So I'm going to score each of my white panels at five inches plus one eighth of an inch. So five and one eighth of an inch, just like so. And then five and three eighths of an inch. There we go. And you can use a trimmer. I'll just use my scissors because they're easier. Uh, and just trim up this second line. There we go. So you're going to want to do this four times and then your parchment panels, you're going to want to cut to around about five inches. Five. You can have the one eighth of an inch if you like as well. Now I would suggest at this stage, you just fold, give a little bit of a crease to that score line that you've created. This is going to be the tab to join on to the next panel. This is where we're going to be die cutting. So I'm going to take the finer detail die. I'm going to put it onto my cardstock. Now I'm going to put it on so that I have an even border around the two edges and the top. This will leave you with a good sort of inch and a half or so at the bottom of space there. So this is where your candle will go. If you're using a battery operated candle, then you're not going to see the base. If you want to wrap ribbon around there, stamp a sentiment, whatever it may be, you've got the space to do that. So I'm going to put that on there. Now, rather than me putting low tack tape on here and potentially tearing the frame, I'm actually going to adhere it through the die into some of those gaps. This will still hold it in place. And now I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. So just taking all of this, I try to take as much out of the die and leave it in the cardstock as possible so that I've got less of my die to clean up. Um, but it's no worries. They're nice big pieces that will come away. And I always make sure I put my tape back on my machine as well. Then you just need to pop all of these pieces out. 
Once you've popped all the pieces out of that panel, you're going to want to move on to your vellum. Now, as I say, the vellum needs to be the width of the panel minus the tab that you have on the side. So this one is just about, just over five inches, five and one eighth, but you can do it five inches, that'd be fine. And then you're going to want to cut into your vellum, but you want to just be careful because of course this panel can go any way up. So you want to make sure that when you lay your vellum over your, or rather under your die cut panel, that the pattern here actually matches so you can do it this way or you can go this way, turn your panel over, so this is the reverse of it, and make sure that your die fits the correct way. So I know this is going to be the top of my panel. Now if I turn this round and show you, or rather turn the die round, if I try to fit that on, it just, you can see, it just doesn't line up. Okay, so I know that this is the correct way round for my panel. That is the top. So just make sure that this is also the top on here too. And I'm going to again leave that even border around the two edges and the top. And then take that down through some of the gaps and run this through my die cutting machine too. Now the vellum will die cut really easily. You don't need much pressure at all for this. There we go. So I've got my vellum piece and this is just like a bold outline for the snowflakes. Now my vellum was longer or wider than my up card stock, so I'm going to glue this down underneath and then I'm going to trim the bottom there. I'm just using the Creative Craft Products book binding glue. Any white glue will work. So I'm going to run a line around the aperture and then all over the bottom and then in a few spaces around the snowflakes, just where there's larger areas for the glue to go. So I'm now going to turn this over and place it onto my vellum, making sure that I'm lining it up with the snowflakes. So I've got a border, if I just lift that up, you can see there's a nice outline around each of the snowflakes, pressing all that down. Then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to snip this bottom edge where mine was a little bit wider. So I've repeated that three more times. So I've now got myself four panels and I'm going to put these together to create our lantern. So I'm choosing to use double-sided tape rather than a glue. And I'm just going to glue the side panel, the tab that we've created on each of these. I'm going to burnish that down to make sure that's well stuck. And then this is going to stick onto the shorter edge of each of the panels. So that's going to go on the right hand edge there. And then I'm going to repeat. I'm going to glue this tab and at attach this one and so on. I'm going to attach the last panel, the fourth panel round and to the very beginning again. There we go. Now, if you wanted a rounder lantern, you could leave it like this, but I'm now going to go ahead and gently fold those creases that we did right at the beginning, those score lines again, to give myself four corners. So I'm just going to work my way along and pinch these back into folds. And there we have the quickest and easiest really pretty lantern. Now I'm just going to finish this off with a little bit of ribbon around the bottom. It's much easier to do this if you fold your lantern in half. And then all that's left to do is to pop that over a candle jar or a battery operated candle and let it light up your hallway, your table, whatever it may be. If you wanted more of a frosted look, you could put an entire sheet of vellum between here and the snowflakes. That would just make the light shine through a little bit less, 
but it's entirely up to you, it depends which look you're going for. I really like being able to see all the way through the lantern. So there we have it, the quickest and easiest Christmas lantern I've ever made and hopefully you're able to follow along with this too. Now of course all the products have amazing discounts on them, you can find these all linked below or at this link here. Don't forget of course to subscribe just here and subscribe to the Craft Stash channel and also follow along to Helen's channel next. Thank you everybody for joining in and take care.